What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how to transplant and care for my mini Phalaenopsis Sogo Vivian. Now take a look at these striking leaves. You can see the variegation or what's really known as a light coloration or a dust colored pattern of the leaves uh, that should normally be green. Uh, now a quick look on the line will show you that all kinds of different orchids come in the variegated kind of look. Uh, there's arachnis, vandas, the phalaenopsis, cattleyas, and oncidiums. Uh, so it is a mutation and it is kind of rare though it isn't uncommon. Now I really haven't seen any variegated orchids uh, in stores or at any kind of like growing greenhouses or anything like that so I do believe that it is pretty rare like I said but it's not uncommon to find them out there and I know on the medium uh, right now there uh, is the mini phalaenopsis and it's so pretty. Uh, typically, the ones that have the higher contrast of color between the dark green and the cream or white color uh, are the more successful of them. Like I said, this one has a nice uh, contrast uh, and it's striking beauty. It's gorgeous. I really like it a lot. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and transplant it and I want to show you how to do that and also tell you a little bit about it and how to care for it as well. Variegation is a mutation and these leaves normally would be green but uh, because of the mutation they do have a lack of chlorophyll right here uh, so they do appear a different color to us. Uh, and typically any plant uh, with the foliage that is variegated will usually require more light. And that is just because uh, it has the lack of green uh, chlorophyll right here. So it's not able to take in as much light. So it does need a little bit more light to actually concentrate and kind of hit the uh, greener areas to kind of get the food and the nutrients that it really needs from the light. Now, if your uh, variegation on your plant kind of starts to turn green all around, you get new leaves and they are all green or a solid green. Uh, that's because it's not getting enough light and the leaves are trying to produce more chlorophyll so that they can actually take in the smaller amounts of light that you are giving your plant. So if you do have a variegated plant and you've started to notice that the leaves are darkening or turning green and you don't see the de uh, decoloration, you probably need to give your plant a little bit more light. And once it starts to get more light, uh, it will start to do okay and uh, produce uh, the variegation again. Now, the pot, for this, I know a lot of you are going to hate me, but I had this pot laying around. It is a terracotta pot, which is not ideal for something that likes a lot of water, like an orchid. But they do sell these terracotta pots that are designed for orchids. And typically when you are choosing a pot for an orchid, you want to consider the root mass. Now look at this beautiful root structure, this root system on here. It's gorgeous. You can tell that the roots are kind of thick and it is a darker green kind of color and that really just kind of symbolizes that I just watered this guy. Uh, so when you see really kind of pretty, uh, pretty green on there, uh, that really means it has gotten water lately and it's fine. Uh, but if your roots are kind of white and dusty and uh, not a green color, that means that they are drying out and they probably do need more water. So when you do repot this guy, you don't really want to give him too much area. Uh, because it doesn't need a whole lot and you can end up uh, over watering it uh, so you got to be very careful and know what you're doing if you do have a larger pot that you're going to put it in but this is the only one I had laying around I didn't feel like going out and buying a new one and I am going to sit him next to the um, humidifier so he'll get avid humid humidity and uh, plenty of water so uh, I will take full responsibility of that but I wanted to go ahead and put him in there so I know a lot of you are going to say something, but uh, this is what I'm going to go ahead and do for it. Now I have my trusty uh, miracle Grow Orchid Potting Mix. You can put them in that, or you can actually put them in some kind of uh, sphagnum moss. Uh, this is uh, designed specifically for orchids, uh, but if you do put them in that, you do not want to overpack them. A lot of times you'll see store-bought orchids and they are just crammed, packed full of sphagnum moss, 
uh, and that will suffocate your roots. They won't be able to breathe. Uh, so make sure you do not use a whole lot and kind of pack them in a lightly. And as you do know, these orchids are uh, typically found in trees, epiphytes. Uh, so they do like a bark mix and they like a good amount of air to be around their roots as well. So your sphagnum mosses and your um, bark, little bits of bark, will actually suffice for your orchid and do really well. Now, as you can see, this guy's got about eight leaves, four on each side. So as I pack him down in there, I'm going to put a little bit of sphagnum moss down in around the roots to kind of help with the water. And I'm going to make sure that the leaves do kind of lean to one side so that uh, the, the older leaves at the bottom will actually get a good amount of light. He's going to be fine. I'll just have him prop himself up. And I'll tear off a little bit of this sphagnum moss to kind of put in around the roots to kind of help a little bit with the water. Now you don't need a whole lot, just a couple of little small pieces down around there, down around there. And as I was saying earlier, the terracotta will wick away some of that water. So make sure you do kind of put a little bit around the roots to kind of help them keep up with the water. You want to take care, maybe use a pen or a pencil, um, like a mechanical one so you don't puncture any of the leaves, uh, but use something that does have a little point, maybe a chopstick, that can actually kind of uh, wiggle down in between those thicker roots and actually put some bark down in there. And as I said, I do want the orchid to kind of lean to one side so that the smaller leaves at the bottom do have a chance to get a little bit of light as well and just kind of lightly pack it down in there with your finger you don't want to push super hard you don't want to break the roots or puncture a leaf or anything like that something that may invite disease or rot into your plant and after you get it to where you about want it to be make sure that uh, the roots that are on top they do have a little bit of bark down in there uh, but it is fine to leave some of these bigger roots towards the surface. That way you can tell if you need to water your plant some more or maybe hold off on the watering. And it looks to be about fine, about right where I want him. All right, and as I was saying, the mini Phalaenopsis uh, is really sought after for those that don't really have a whole lot of space. They can really take it and set it on a windowsill, and they are pretty much at home there as long as they get a good amount of light. But I do have mine in a rather large pot, so I probably won't have room to set him on the windowsill, uh, but I will set him under the LEDs in the grow room in the back. And I think he'll be just fine. Light, you want to make sure they are getting some kind of bright shade. Uh, there is kind of a happy medium. If you see kind of yellow or brown leaves, it probably needs more shade. Uh, if you see kind of uh, floppy, darker green leaves, you might need uh, more light. But there is kind of a happy medium. Uh, if you get kind of the darker green with uh, some flowers, your orchid's probably right on track of where it needs to be. Uh, but uh, you kind of just have to know what you're doing for the light. But you want to make sure you do not burn them, so be very careful of that. Watering, I uh, probably will give this guy about a cup of water once or twice a week. Uh, you know, in the wintertime, it's going to need a lot less water because they are resting a little bit. Ideally, they are from the tropics. Uh, so life pretty much does kind of go right on as normal through the wintertime, but they can kind of go in a little bit of rest. So um, just pay attention to your orchid. It will tell you if it needs water or not. Uh, and the roots, as I was saying earlier, are a good indication of that. If you do see a lot of green around the roots, it means that they are pretty well watered. Uh, and the white, kind of powdery or tan colored, uh, means that they probably do need a little bit more water as well. Take care not to actually get water down here in this crown. If you continue to get water in the crown of your Phalaenopsis leaves, uh, they can get crown rot. Uh, so if that happens, it's cool just to get a little water down in there. Just take you a paper towel and take the little corners and stick it down in there and uh, let it wick up any water uh, and your orchid will be just fine. 
Now, I usually try to water them on uh, with some distilled water, probably a spray bottle or something, just enough to make sure that water actually is coming out the bottom to make sure that all the roots do get some water. Uh, roots that go a long time without getting water will die, so you want to actually make sure you do get water all around uh, the ring kind of, uh, of the plant as well underneath the leaves. Fertilizer can be a little tricky. Um, some people believe that it's good to kind of feed them for about eight weeks, rest a week, then another eight weeks. Uh, but during the grow season, I water mine or fertilize mine probably about once a week, uh, no more than that. I like a all balance kind of all purpose uh, orchid fertilizer, Fox Farm, Miracle Grow, Southern Ag make really good ones. Uh, but one that's equal parts nitrogen phosphorus and potassium, kind of like a 10-10-10 or a 20-20-20, uh, would be really good for your fertilizer. I like uh, Southern Ag or miracle Grow, uh, but they do really well for them also. Uh, and I said about once a week, and like I said, I do water mine for, or fertilize mine for about eight weeks, give it a rest for a week, uh, and then go on another eight weeks. Uh, and that seems to work with my Phalaenopsis. Pests you have to watch out for, spider mites, uh, aphids, mealybugs can kind of can be a problem sometime, but as you can tell, I've got this bark here, so I don't have the ability to actually add all my matniks over top of it. Uh, so the aphids can definitely propose a problem. Uh, so you do have to be mindful of your watering uh, because that can attract pests. Also, as I said earlier, some people like to get the mini Phalaenopsis Sogo so Vivian and uh, place it on the windowsill, but just make sure that you do not especially in the summertime, go higher on your windowsills in the temperatures of about 85 to 90 degrees. If you do, I would probably scoot it back some just to make sure the comfortable range for an orchid at night, the minimum is uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, during the day, you really don't want to go between 75 to 85. Over that, uh, the water intake level needs to increase. Uh, and you want to make sure that you do have protection from the sun during the hottest part of the day. And if you're in the wintertime, make sure that if you do have it on the windowsill, you have double pane glass uh, because the uh, cold outside gets really cold and uh, you can kill your plant. Uh, and if it gets too cold, they won't actually bloom. So be very careful as well. Well guys, I hope that really answers some of your questions with this. Like I said, this is a really uh, beautiful plant. Uh, it is seeing a lot of success here lately. I know a lot of growers that do have it. Uh, so if you wanted to repot yours or just find out a little bit more about it, uh, I hope this video does help. That being said, while you're at it, leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with this plant or any of your other orchids. Uh, I have a lot, so I hope you guys do too. Uh, and while you're at it, uh, leave a comment and uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you YouTube.